Right guys, I know it doesn't look like I've done very much, and in truth, I really haven't done a whole lot. Um, but it took a very, very long time to do not very much. I spent the entire evening last night trying to fit a link to a chain and trying to reverse this, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it again. You know what it is. Anyway, basically the problem I found last night was um, when I tried to put the gears into first gear, the angle of the chain was too extreme from the front to the back. And the reason for that is because this... Um, Crank, oh, what's it called? Oh, for oh, it'll come to me. This <coughs> was fitted to the outside of the adapter, and because it was fitted to the outside of the adapter, we had the adapter and then we had this, and it was sitting too far at this direction and it was uh, causing too much of an angle. So I thought, no problem, I'll just stick it on the inside. But of course it wouldn't fit because it's too tight. So what I ended up doing was putting, uh, you might be able to see in there, there's a couple of washers. Excuse the um, the noise, it's blowing a gale out here. Um, yeah, I put a couple of washers in, oh, there they are, you can see them in there. Um, if it would focus. Anyway, two washers. Longer screws, I had to cut screws down to, to be the right size. Uh, a complete ball egg of a job. But we eventually got there. And now if I put this into first gear and crank it along, it goes in nice and smooth. And it runs reasonably smoothly here. It's a lot better than it was because last night, when I did this, it was, um, you could actually see the, the t each tooth was catching on the chain as it was coming, going around. It just the, the, the difference between the first and uh, the chain ring, chain ring, yeah, I remembered. Ha! The difference between the chain ring and first gear was too great. So it's good now. Um, that's done. We've got nice smooth gears. Everything is going well, so now I'm going to try and finish off getting the cabling into position and getting the um, the rest of it all buttoned up. Uh, the one thing which is going to be an issue for me, if I can just find it here. The one thing which is going to be an issue for me, which I had hoped would be simple, is the brakes. Uh, standard e-bike brakes are not hydraulic. And these are hydraulic. So to get a switch on your brake, which I think is important, I don't like riding a bike, an e-bike without a brake, uh, without a switch on the brake. I had bought these, and basically what that is inside that is a little reed switch, and the idea is that fits to somewhere to your brake, and then there's a a magnet here. So when you pull the brake on. The idea is that that will <clears throat> break the switch, but the problem I have here is that the movement in the brake lever is so small, there's the magnet there, I can't see any way that that is going to work. So we're going to have to come up with plan B on this one, but in the meantime I can get the, the rest of the bike operational without, uh, without brake switches. Not ideal, but some people aren't too concerned about it. I prefer to have a brake switch, uh, but we'll see. We'll maybe manage to figure out some way of fixing that later, and I'll update you if I do. Um, last time I was on, I complained about the wheel being off center. Uh, it's pretty close to center now, and not too bad a wobble in it. It's not perfect, but it's as close as I can get it, uh, being a complete numpty when it comes to straightening wheels but it seems to be okay um, but yeah that's 
that's the latest update I get the cabling done and not tonight obviously because of the wind but get it out for a test run and we'll see how it goes all right bye for now just a quick update on the um the brake issue that i was talking about earlier um it looks like this is going to work that appears to be the exact right position for for both so i'll probably have to epoxy these into position <clears throat> but um at the moment if i try to hit the throttle it works and if i pull the brake i don't have another hand here so i'll have to do it this way uh, and hit the throttle and you're getting nothing so that's good. Uh, I was a bit concerned that, that was going to be an issue, but it looks like we can we can uh, get around that quite easily. So, next thing I guess is to figure out how on earth I'm going to epoxy that into position um, without messing up the rest of the the uh, brake lever. Hmm. I think about that. I might have to just stick it on or something. I don't know. We'll see but anyway that's where it has to go <clears throat> unless somebody can uh, come up with a better idea that's where it's going to be um and i'd rather not i suppose use anything that's too uh permanent but we'll see what it can do and even might even get away with trying a different shape magnet or something i have some long thin magnets out of um out of hard drives computer hard drives that i could try but it's working and that's the main thing um it's just a matter of making sure it stays working uh I'd be a bit concerned that it, it's such a small amount of movement there i'd be concerned that, that might be an issue just a little bit um unreliable i'll try it and see okay guys well it's far from finished but as you can see it's not looking too bad um the brick solution the e-brick solution um not so great it's a bit temperamental sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't probably because this is flopping about this is the minute it just has the magnet taped onto it um so it was only testing the one and it's as you can see there's so little movement there it's <clears throat> it's really really difficult to um to confirm if that's working correctly or not uh well, i think we need to come up with a better solution than that uh temporary solution for the screw in the side on wood screws <laughs> they're all i have at the minute um they're not even very tight but they'll do the job i'm waiting for m4 bolts to come 100 mil long so that's good as you can see you've got this all sort of tightened up <clears throat> i just use velcro here to hold the um the connectors uh not happy with that i'll have to come up with a better solution than that for charging but uh, in the meantime it seems to be okay this is okay and best of all it does wheelies <laughs> put it in the first gear hit the throttle and boom it just does a wheelie so that's good <clears throat> that's what i want so obviously lots of torque um so yeah very pleased very happy with uh how it's going so far lots of minor adjustments and small changes to make here and there but uh, it's now working uh well in working well enough to take it out for for a bit of a a blast i just had it up the street there in the darkness for just a bit of a test and it seems to be going well okay guys well i'm just back from a cycle ride around the streets here about three miles or so and performed absolutely perfect no issues whatsoever uh really really pleased um like i said before still a few things to button up still have to sort out the brakes um get those tidied up a few cabling things to sort out uh use the proper um long bolts 
to go through here to, to join this together. Um, at the moment those those screws are only temporary and could easily fall out. They're not very they're not very secure. But um, as you can see to to get it going for today, I just taped the magnet on here. This one is glued on and appears to be okay, but it's still kind of iffy. So I think the only thing I'm going to be able to do is maybe try and 3D print something that would go around here and sit out here so that when this is pulled, maybe if the, the magnet was here and the sensor was here, there would be, be a little bit more movement that direction. I don't know, haven't decided yet. Um, I don't like riding this without them though, because uh, especially off-road, if you go to um, if you go to do anything at all it, that requires riding slowly and carefully, you don't really want the brakes, or the, you don't really want the uh, the motor kicking in full tilt and uh, chucking you off. So the idea is to have it um, so you just touch the brakes and that uh, dis disconnects the motor and means that you can r uh, just ride along until you actually want the motor. Sometimes you don't want the motor kicking in, other times you do, and it's nice to have the choice. Um, so that's that's something I need to, to look into, but I can do that. There's no hurry on that. As you can see, it's nice and muddy, just the way it should be. Uh, but yeah, absolutely chuffed a bit. It's going well. No issues with the uh, chain, no issues with the sprocket, everything, the chain ring. Everything good. And uh forgot to say, um, if I put this up to, let's just turn it on here. If I put this up to number nine and put this onto gear number nine, um, this will do approximately 25 miles an hour, a bit, little bit more. Um, so that's plenty fast enough. And if I put it into first gear, it does well. It it doesn't do wheelies as such, but it certainly takes off pretty quick. And at the moment, the voltage is quite low. It's only thirty-seven point eight volts. So if I get that up to forty-two volts, that'll give a heck of a a heck of a lot more kick. Um, but I'll worry about that later. I think this is going into storage for a few weeks anyway, till after Christmas, and then we'll we'll pick it up after that. So. With that, we will sign off on this bike. Um, there might be more minor updates, but the next major, um, the next major installation or major video or major job is going to be this one. Getting the hub motor onto this and getting this going on the road. So, once again, if you have been watching, thank you. If you haven't, well, it's your loss. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.